a proud plant nerd. And I've been for many years. And this is my attempt to convince you that plants are cooler than what you think. I would like to introduce you to my first plant, Mimosa pudica, the shy plant. We met when I was seven. I fell in love. She sat by my window for some years before sadly passing away. What made her unique is that when I touched her, she shriveled. Hence, the name Pudica, Shara. This is how it plays. So, this is how I realized I didn't know enough about plants. Let's start with some common knowledge. Photosynthesis. Plants are able to transform water and carbon dioxide into sugar through sunlight. Enough sugar and organic compounds to make up for the soil and the food for most organisms. Enough oxygen to sustain life on Earth. Hence, we kind of depend on them. Every second, terrestrial plants produce 2 million kilograms of sugar. One second, 2 million kilograms of sugar. It takes five seconds for the plant kingdom to create its own plant-based torifel. Another known fact is that plants usually don't move, at least not in the animal sense of moving. And since they have been around for quite some time, they've had to adapt. And for example, forests or plants that are born in a hostile environment, well, they can't migrate, they can't, they can't change their surrounding, so they have to change themselves. We see forests becoming bonsai in places in which there's not enough nutrients, adapting so to the environment. And here are also some oak seedlings that I took, plucked from the soil and I put them in tap water and you see they adapted. You see the root from being the brown soil root to becoming the white water root. And this is all thanks to their decentralized structure, which means they don't have organs like us, they don't have weak spots, they can potentially grow forever. And this makes them incredibly adaptable. You can chop off branches of a tree. You can belt it to the ground, you can cement its truck, it will survive. Does it work the same for us? Get rid of the liver. What next? So, another point that I want to make is that plants are older than what we expect. Ginkgo biloba has been around for 200 million years. It's the oldest plant around. We humans, Homo sapiens have been around for 200,000 years. Now, the human mind is not the best at grasping these huge numbers. But if we say that the Ginkgo biloba has been around for 10 years, we've been working, work, walking on Earth for merely three days. If we see the evolution game as who survives the longest, well, who is winning then? They also have this tendency of being the best fighter against today's struggles. Global warming, CO2 emissions, well, easy, photosynthesis. Desertification, well, water conservation done by plants by limiting soil evaporation um, with their roots uh, and providing shade. Erosion and landslides, their roots firm the soil, preventing all of this. And they also break the waves that so preventing so um, cost erosion. And I could go on. But the most important concept is that we don't know them. We recently discovered that a Venus flytrap can count until five through electrical impulses. We recently discovered that plants communicate. Yet, We've been always convinced that we knew everything about these simple organisms. So, about plant communication. 
The roots form a symbiotic relationship with the fungal underground called Mycorrhizia. The fungi absorb sugars from the root and the root absorbs minerals from the fungi. And it is protected from diseases and has other benefits too. Moreover, the fungi create complex and long, um, and long pathways that connect each plant to each other. And this pathway can become, this, this connection can be incredibly useful when there is a pest attack. Because a plant, when it is under attack, it will send volatile compound around the air, it will send electrical impulses through its cells, but it will also send infochemicals along this network of fungi. And so, certain plants get alarmed beforehand of an attack and they can prepare. And they can make the leaves less appetizing and they can make, they can produce their own pesticides. And plants can help each other in many different ways. For example, by gifting nutrients to each other when someone is in need. Suzanne Simmer discovered that dying old trees give up almost 40% of their carbon to the neighboring trees. Hence, gifting the energy they have accumulated throughout the years to the others. And we had no idea that this was a thing. Now, why should we care? Well, because we might be causing a sixth mass extinction on top of a current climate crisis. And we need to start respecting these ecosystems and we need more knowledge, we need to stay curious. And we need to stop assuming that we know enough because we don't. Think about this absurdity. Genetically modified crops, made specifically to be more resistant against pests, have lost their ability to communicate and hence alarm each other, help each other. We cut down dying trees, not knowing what the role is in a forest. We deforested, deforested land with drastic impact on on erosion, on the desertification and soil depletion. We do this and more through the mindset of we know enough. And we have been proven wrong. I hope I managed to convince you that plants are slightly more interesting than what you thought and that they maybe deserve some curiosity and respect. <laughs>